I don't want this to be boring, so ask questions, challenge me, whatever, as we go along. Um, what, what this kind of uh, presentation really is, how long have we got? Um, until I've got it. Right. What this is really about is just a kind of a story about how, how life can take you in a completely different direction and the learning that goes on um, along the way. I know that your, your staff here teach you using some amazing Web2 technologies and things like that. You're not getting much of that with me this evening. Um, but what you are getting is, I'm going to tell you my story, <coughs> what happened to me, uh, a bit about the industry then, my, my view on the industry now, and specifically, this is where the law bit comes in, I'm going to talk to you about recording contracts. So just recording contracts this evening. There will be an instalment, um, uh, another instalment around publishing. I think that's where it starts to get really interesting, actually, around music publishing. But it's recording contracts, that's where I'm going to talk about some of the, the legal stuff, um, and then my learning from it all, really. So, Mark, can you... Can you um, do the next slide. Before I tell my story, there's a link there, Mark. Can you just play yeah. that? Hopefully it'll work. Yeah. Just enhance the screen. Uh, yeah, it's all there. So looking at me, you'd think I wouldn't know anything about urban music, but that's where the story starts, really. And it's funny how life can twist and turn. So, uh, 11 years ago, this story, this is a story of 11 years ago, a story that really lasts um, uh, over two years. So one day, I'm about to um, go into my mother's house, and uh, I grew up in a really dodgy council estate in South London, I mean really, really dodgy. So I'm about to go into my mother's house, visit her for the day or whatever, and um, a lad who I'd known of uh, for a while, he was 18 at the time, 17, 18, he came up to me and said, Matt, you, you know about law, don't you? Because, the, look, look, the estate I grew up on was so bad that if you went to university, everyone on the estate knew that you went to university. And it was known that I went to university, I did a law degree, I worked in the law, etc. So he said, you know about law? I said, I know a bit. And, that, and at that time I was teaching. And he said, he said I need, uh, can I come back in 20 minutes? Because I want to show you something. So he turned, turned back up with this bit of paper, a few bits of paper actually. He said, I've got this recording contract. I don't know anything about this. Can you help me understand it? And that was the start of a two year journey. So um, it was a recording contract with some indie label for one track. And I think um, there was no money involved. And that's one thing we'll talk about tonight. And he just wanted to know whether it was, you know, whether it was worth him pursuing. And at that time, I didn't know anything about music law. I, know, I knew a lot about contract law because that's what my, my background uh, was. So we got talking and we started to see how this was uh, kind of going to work out and um, I ended up managing him, okay? And he was part of the So Sonic group. So a collective of, I think they were about 30, but depending on how you count it, it could, it could rise to about 50. So it's sort of 30 uh, black kids from South London council estates that were kind of, that worked hard to um, secure musical success. The fact that about 10 of them ended up in prison by the end of the journey and had no money is another part of the story. Okay, but it's, it was fascinating. The whole thing was, was really fascinating. So, he was a producer. He was one of the producers in, in, the, um, in the outfit. And of course, So Solid started with a single signed to, a, to an indie label called, called Relentless. And uh, Relentless sold their single um, for 100,000 pounds for a single. 100,000 for a single. Things like that don't happen uh, anymore. And then they went on to secure a recording contract um, with a label called Independiente for and a recording contract in advance for 750,000 pounds. Split over 30, that's not 30 people, that's not as much as you would um, uh, think it was. So I spent two years with him, looking after his affairs, doing negotiations, we secured a big publishing deal for him personally. Moved to today, he's now a producer in America, doing quite well. He's not rich, he's earning enough money to make a decent um, living, you know, a comfortable living for him, his children, his wife um, in America. And now, Right now he's working with people like Nicole Scherzinger and um, as part of a big production team, so people like Lady Gaga are doing, doing production work. 
So that's the start of the journey, that's the end of the journey. We'll pick up some of the stuff in the middle as we go along. So that's the start of the story. Let's then um, flip on to the next thing. The industry back then, now you've got to remember, it was a very, very different place. And the first point is that the, the industry was full of money. There was money, uh, record companies were doing particularly well, uh, and they were throwing money around, you know, with complete abandon without having any sense of where the music industry was gone. I mean, the music industry is a bit like the newspaper industry. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, it should have been thinking where it would be today, but it didn't actually do that. So when the times were good, they were focusing on the there and now, and not what was going to, to happen. You know, they didn't, they didn't foresee some of the things coming over the horizon whatsoever. So there was loads and loads of money. So £750,000 for, um, for an urban act. When we, when we looked at the publishing deal, and the publishing, So Solid actually set up their own publishing company called Family Records, and they did a deal with EMI. And they got five million from EMI. Okay? Those things don't happen anymore, but it was so much money. And also, uh, remember the internet, I mean the internet was there, but people weren't uh, downloading tracks, there wasn't iTunes. People were, were primarily still buying their music from HMV and, and independent record stores. So the world's so different now. <coughs> the thing that was happening there, something else I was involved in, I don't even know if you have development deals today, but I bet they're a lot different from what they were. So just, Mark, just play that, just uh, hit that link, and I'll tell you about this particular development deal that I was involved with. 